Welcome back everyone to our third example video for factoring trinomials by grouping. We've got 12x squared minus 28x plus 15. I'm using a little bit larger number here so I can do an example with a little bit bigger numbers when we're dealing with the a, b, and c part. So we'll go through and we'll label our coefficients a, b, and c. We will look at a times c always and compare it to b as we've done in our other examples. So looking at a times c, you have 12 times 15. If you look at that, that's a bigger number than we've been dealing with. It's 180. And if you look at b, it is negative 28. That one's at least easier to get because it's right there. And the process, remember, is two numbers that multiply to get a times c. Those same two numbers will add to give us b. Now the trick is, how do I see what multiplies to get 180, right, and adds to get 28, negative 28, because 180 is a really big number. If you're not sure, what you might do is start thinking about pairs of factors that will give you 180, and you can start listing them. You can say, well, 1 times 180, and maybe 2 goes into 180, 2 times 90 would be 180 and 3 goes into 180, 3 times 60, and we keep looking and we see if we can find any pairs of factors that we're writing down that will somehow give us 28 in some combination. I don't see anything here yet, so we'll try maybe 4. 4 times 45 will give us 180 also, and we'll keep going. Uh, 5, so if I do 5 times 36, that's 180. I'm going to keep going. 6 times 30 will give us 180. It turns out 7 does not go into 180. 8 will not go in either, but 9 times 20 will go. And then we also have 10 times 18. I'm going to continue and complete this list just so you can see the full idea of what's going on. 11 doesn't go in, but 12 does. 12 times 15. I know that because I used 12 times 15, A times C to get that. 13 does not go. 14 does not go. The next thing that goes in, if I look down the list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 12, the next thing that would go in would be 15, but that would be 15 times 12, and I've sort of rounded the halfway mark. I'm just going to get the same pairs that I was getting before, but in the opposite order. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there and just say 12 times 15 will be my last one. And so I'm looking somehow for a pair that I can add or subtract to give me negative 28. Now, these would multiply to get a positive, so they're the same sign, and they're going to add to give me a negative, and the only way to have the same signs and add to get a negative would mean they're both negative. So if you want to go back and put a negative, because we know for sure on each of these, and then say, well, which of these pairs is the magic pair that will give us negative 28 when we add them together? And so if I go down the list, um, you can see we start with a really big, this would be negative 181, right? And then this would be negative 92. And you notice as you go down the list, maybe you can see that we're getting a smaller and smaller number, right? So you look here, negative 5, negative 36, that's still negative 41. It's too big, so it must be further down the list, right? So you hopefully will arrive at this negative 10 and negative 18 being the, the magic pair that works, right? So if I have a negative 10 and I have a negative 18, that will give me a positive 180 when I multiply. When I add negative 10 and negative 18, that will give me a negative 28 for my b. So negative 10 and negative 18 work. That's how we regroup the b term as like terms. So we'll keep the a term. We keep that it is an x term, so we get negative 10x minus 18x. We've used our negative 10 and negative 18 plus 15. So hopefully this gives you an idea of things you can do if the numbers are large when you're trying to figure out factoring there. Now we just look at pairs and we do GCF in pairs. What is the GCF of the first half? I can pull out 2 and x. 2x times what gives me the first term? 6x. 2x times what gives me the second term? Negative 5. So 6x minus 5 is going to be one of our factors. I copy it down again. 
and I find it in the second half. So I say 6x minus 5 times what will give me the second half? Well, just look at the first part. What times 6x will give us negative 18x? Well, I would need it to be negative, and then 3 times the 6 would give me 18. I double check. Is negative 3 times negative 5 positive 15? It is indeed. So I write down my inside factor, 6x minus 5. My outsides become the other factor, 2x minus 3. And we now have our answer for this problem. 6x minus 5 times 2x minus 3. All right, check out our example 4 video, our last factoring trinomials by grouping example. We'll see you in the next one.